in the Ohio River Valley. The climate was very similar to that of today. The people of central Ohio had ample food supplies. It took perhaps only three hours of labor each day to get enough food to survive. Because of the wealth of the land, they constructed large geometric earthworks in central and southern Ohio, three major centers. The first was on both sides of the Ohio River at Portsmouth. Today, only a small fraction of that complex of earthworks still remains. The second center was within the present city of Newark, just east of Columbus. There, the Hopewell constructed several large geometric figures and connected them with miles of parallel embankments. The third great center was in the Scioto River Valley around Chillicothe. Here the Hopewell constructed some two dozen major enclosures in the shapes of squares, circles and octagons. Beyond their earthen architecture, the woodland peoples acquired wealth through trade. Copper from the southern shore of Lake Superior, Silver from East Central Canada. Obsidian from the Yellowstone region of Wyoming. Mica from the Blue Ridge Mountains. And from the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, shells. The trade network of the woodland peoples extended across the eastern half of North America. But the essential question remains. Why? Why build mounds? For what purpose? The mounds were constructed for a variety of reasons. The earthworks tell us that they had an organized, stable society, one capable of undertaking construction projects of a monumental scale. Not just mounds, but mile upon mile of embankments moving thousands of tons of soil. Mound City near Chillicothe, Ohio, was a very special place. Although it is smaller than most Hopewell sites, it contains more mounds than most of the other earthworks. The Hopewell people were not alone in building mounds. For 700 years, the Adena culture built tall, conical mounds throughout the Ohio River Valley. The Adena probably had close ties with the Hopewell, 